Today's top stories at NBR. Person facing insider trading charge pleads not guilty. Media company considers letting executives use a $30 million share buyback to help earnings per share targets. The government finally introduces fair pay agreement legislation. And there's more coming right up. Kia ora and welcome to NBR Today, 100% subscriber funded and proudly brought to you by you, as is every story at nbr.co.nz. It's Tuesday, March 29th. I'm Paul Brennan. Thanks again for joining us. Christchurch-based niche technology firm Sift Technologies has sold an almost 20% stake of itself to a Boston-based private equity investor, Ampersand, allowing it to strike further into the semiconductor market while also diversifying. The company, which is listed on the Unlisted Securities Exchange, today, Tuesday, informed shareholders it had reached a deal that sees Massachusetts-based Ampersand Capital Partners invest $22.8 million in Sift, subject to share shareholder approval for 17.5 million shares at a price of $1.30 per share. Ampersand's total shareholding will amount to 19.6% of total shares post-investment and values the company at about $116 million. SIFT shares last traded for $1.25, representing a $90 million market cap. Chief Executive Alex Fowler told NBR the deal came about as a result of Ampersand regularly scanning the market and noticing SIFT's rapid growth. A person facing a criminal charge for alleged insider trading in relation to the sale of more than 5 million shares in Pushpay nearly four years ago has today, Tuesday, pleaded not guilty in the Auckland District Court. In February, the Financial Markets Authority filed court proceedings against two people for alleged insider trading. One faced a criminal charge filed in the Auckland District Court, while both faced civil proceedings, which have been filed in the High Court at Auckland. Both were granted interim names suppression until the first appearance. The FMA alleges the defendant advised and encouraged the sale of at least 5.5 million shares held by a trust while knowing material information not generally available to the market. The defendant's lawyer, John Dixon QC, told the court the defendant pleaded not guilty and elected a trial by jury. Media company NZME is considering letting its executives use a $30 million share buyback to help meet their earnings per shares target under a new incentive scheme, its board said today, Tuesday. In a statement to the NZX, NZME confirmed the on-market buyback is due to begin on April 4th and will acquire up to 21.4 million shares, or about 11% of the issued share capital. The move coincides with a change to the company's executive incentive pay scheme, introduced this year. Under the new scheme, the performance target will be a 50-50 mix of earnings per share and total shareholder return over a three-year period. One effect of a share buyback is to reduce the number of shares on issue, which increases earnings per share, all being equal. My Farm says the handling of a lease in the receivership sale of a key tenant didn't feel right in either moral or legal terms as it prepares for a full trial later this year. The Sacred Hill Group of companies was put into receivership in May 2021, owing creditors nearly $100 million, including a $52.4 million debt to a pointer Westpac. Sacred Hill's Marlborough business was sold for $43 million as an ongoing concern to contract winemaker Vinlink Marlborough in in July. Though landlord Bartlett's Creek wanted control of the lease of its vineyard, currently tenanted by Sacred Hill until 2051. It's pursuing the new owners in a bid to terminate the lease. Speaking to NBR today, Tuesday, my farm chief executive Andrew Waters didn't want to get into detail on a legal matter, but said the process of re-tenanting the property didn't feel right in either moral or legal terms. The government has finally introduced its fair pay agreement legislation to Parliament at least two years later than it was promised. Workplace Relations and Safety Minister Michael Wood said the government had taken another step to deliver on its pre-election commitments to lift incomes and improve working conditions for everyday Kiwis. Labour had expected to have the law in place before the last election, but opposition from its then coalition partner New Zealand First stymied that plan. Employers are not happy and joining me earlier today, Tuesday, was Business NZ Chief Executive Kirk Hope. So there's a range of uh, issues that we have with them. We don't think that they are fit for a modern economy. I mean, if you think about the way that businesses could adapt and respond 
to COVID, for example, fair pay agreements would cut across their business's ability to do that. So they're just not really fit for a modern economy. They're, a, they're really a solution that's that's looking for a problem. And, and the government's own officials have indicated um, that there are better solutions uh, or there, there are better, issue, uh, better ways to deal with the, with the issues. Business NZ Chief Executive Kirk Hope. Get the full details of those stories and more right now at nbr.co.nz. Tomorrow at NBR, an analysis of how likely a warehouse re-entry into the supermarket business is and an Aussie PE firm buys into a New Zealand tech business. I'm Paul Brennan. Join me again from around lunchtime tomorrow for the morning's NBR trending stories. Then again from 5.30 right here for another NBR Today. NBR.